This land, like the precious gem, has many beautiful facets. Explore with us now the facets of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes. And for the next few minutes, we're going to be talking about one of the many beautiful facets of Islam. In this episode, I'd like to discuss the word just. Just as in justice, just as in fair, just as in being perfectly balanced, just as in giving fair measure, proper reward or punishment, real justice. Islam insists on things being fair and balanced. One of the things that we should keep in mind is that Allah, the creator, is just. And he's the epitome of this word, adil, adil. And he is most just, most fair in everything. Everything that he creates has a balance to it, a beautiful balance. It's never going to be tipped one way or the other, except when the human tries to play with it. And of course, <laughs> that will backfire on them. Let me begin by mentioning that when Allah tells us in the Quran how to deal with people, he tells us, don't let your hatred for a people cause you to deal unjustly with them. An example of this came from the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when it was his responsibility to give a verdict in a particular case. And the people really were not treating the Muslims well, they were not treating him well, but yet he dealt with justice in what he was doing. There was an occasion when the tribes in the Quraysh time, Mecca, had rebuilt part of the Kaaba, and they took the stone, the black stone, which they were cleaning, preparing, reconstructing, doing some renovation. Then it came time to put the stone back. The problem came now that each member of the tribe was saying, I want to put it back. So this tribe is saying, no, we're going to put it back. And this tribe says, no, we want to be the one to put it in there. And it got a little bit serious. In fact, they almost went to blows because of this honor of putting the stone back, which is a nice thing. They were going to do something really bad, and they were going to start killing each other. But then it was decided. But how will we handle the problem? Because everybody wants to be the tribe to put it back, put the stone in its place. It was decided that, all right, whoever comes in the gate, the next one through the door to the sanctuary, We'll let them decide. Of course, right away, I'm sure each of the tribe members was thinking, I hope it's somebody from my tribe. I hope it's somebody from our tribe, because then we'll be the ones to put it back. And who came through the door? None other than Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And when he came through the door, they all became happy. He was only from one tribe. Why would all the other tribes be happy? because he had this quality of being just, of being fair, being trustworthy, and being honest. So they felt that, well, if we're going to get a fair shot, it's going to come from him. So they explained to him the dilemma, the problem that they had. Who shall put this stone back in its place, they wanted to know. How about our tribe? What about our tribe? What about us? And look at the wisdom that comes with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And by the way, don't forget, he could have said, well, my tribe, because, you know, we're the oldest tribe, or my grandfather was the big leader, and so and so. He could have said all of those things. And he could have given a lot of good reasons why it should only be his tribe, of Beni Hashem, perhaps, that should do it. But he didn't. Instead, he said, why not take a sheet or a large cloth and then put the stone in this cloth. Then a member of each tribe take part of this cloth and lift it up. So all of you together are lifting it up, taking it to its place, 
and then I'll push it into its place. And he did. Exactly that's how it was done. Imagine this. Now that's dealing really fair. Another lesson that we have, and we learn this from the Quran, is the fairness of all the prophets, especially when they were called upon to judge. In one instance, we have the story of the woman who came forward complaining that this other woman had taken her baby. They brought the other woman and they want to know what's going on. And they asked the prophet Suleiman about judgment on this. The one lady said, well, her baby died and she took my baby in the night. The other lady said, no, 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 this is my baby, your baby died. Both of them arguing about this subject. Whose baby is it? And the prophet said to them, why don't we do this? We'll be fair. Bring a sword and we'll cut the baby in half. We'll give the half to the one lady and half to the other lady. Each of you will have an equal amount. The lady holding the baby said, okay, that's fair. Yeah, do that. The other lady said, no, 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 no. Let her keep it. Let her keep it. It's okay. It's her baby. The prophet then understood and he said, this lady is the real mother. This lady, the one who said, let her keep it. Because he knew no mother would ever agree to having their child cut like this. The other lady, on the other hand, it really happened that her baby did die. And in her distress, in her mind, she had stolen this other baby. And her mind wasn't clear anymore, obviously. Because otherwise, how could she agree to allow somebody to cut her baby in half? It wasn't her baby. And so this is a lesson that we get right away about justice, true justice. Islam insists on things being fair. Another thing that's very important amongst Muslims is to deal in business in a fair and just manner. That when you give measure, you have to give full measure. And when you receive, you have to be careful not to take more than is due to you. Now that's simple to say it, but in real life what happens, and a lot of people don't practice it. Even though they claim to be Muslims, they claim to be a good person, but still when it comes to business, and you see somebody taking a little extra, but not giving full measure, then you know they have not fulfilled their Islam. They're not really dealing in justice. Allah warns them about that. He curses them in the Quran because they want full measure for themselves, but they don't give this justice to others whenever they do business with them. Also, even small things. I've watched Muslims, and it really impresses me when I see Muslims do this. And I'm not saying other people don't do it too. In fact, it's a good sign from anybody of any religion when they deal justly. It's very good. In fact, this could be a way that Allah will guide them because of their good, just heart that they have. But I remember one time when my own mother, many years ago, was driving, we were traveling on a long trip, and she stopped the car and she said, oh my God. We said, what's the matter? She said, when we were at the restaurant, I didn't pay for something that I bought over there. I got it and I left, I didn't pay for it. And she turned around and drove over a hundred miles back just to give them a few coins for that thing that she had bought and not paid for. And the people were amazed and they said, how? How is it you did that? You came all this way, but just for this. She said, no, because you have to deal in justice. Now, keep in mind, my mother wasn't a Muslim, but she was doing the justice which comes in the monotheistic religion. So if anybody deals with justice, it is good for them and good for all of us. Now, I want you to think about this. We're going to take a break. We're going to come right back right after this and have more of the facets of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Yusuf Estes, your host here on Facets of Islam. We're back and we're talking about the subject of just, as in justice and justness. We've been talking about how Islam is ordering for us to deal fair, especially in business. I've given you a couple of examples of incidences that have taken place. And I've seen it from Muslims as well. In fact, it's one of the things that really attracted me 
to Islam is dealing with a man in business. Because you see, when I came to Islam, I really wasn't looking for a new religion. In fact, I was trying to convert people to go to Christianity. The man that I was trying to convert was a Muslim from Egypt. We were doing business together. And I considered myself a pretty fair businessman, just, in my own opinion. But this man did some things that disturbed me. I'll give you an example. We had a table that had some sale items on it. And when people come up, they pay a small amount and take their items and go. But I saw that he was reaching into a box and giving the people things out of a box rather than taking them off the table. So I asked him, why are you doing this? He said, well, the things on the table have an expiration date that is much sooner than the ones in the box, so I'm giving them the ones from the box. I said, but didn't you understand the reason we put those on the table for the low price is because of the expiration date? Don't you know that as soon as those are gone, we're going to raise the price back up, and then we'll put these out there? He said to me, in my religion, I can't do that. I said, what? He said, listen, if you want to run a sale, this is one subject. But if you're going to do that, then you need to inform them about this date, and that that's the reason. You can't just put it up there as though it's the same product that you have in the box. I said, they don't care. He said, I care. I was shocked. How is that? Is this Islam? He said, this is Islam. I said, okay, well then fine. Tell them what you want to say or put them all out there. Who cares? But that small thing had a big impact on me. But when it comes to a law, now let's talk about a law. Is a law fair? Is a law just? Does a law deal in fairness with the people? We said a law is ideal, which means he's absolutely just in all things. But watch this, and I think you'll appreciate when you hear how Allah really deals. Islam teaches us that there is an angel records your good deeds and another angel recording the bad deeds. As soon as a person intends to do a good deed, the intention itself is recorded as a good deed. They already have a full good deed just for the intention. And if they do the deed, actually achieve that, do it, accomplish it, then it's recorded for them ten times. Ten times. And Allah says, who brings me a good deed on the day of judgment, they'll find ten. Meaning that you have ten times reward for every single good deed. That's good news. That would keep this angel pretty busy if I did a lot of good deeds, recording all of these times ten, wouldn't it? But then look at this. If a person intended to do a bad deed, nothing's recorded. Nothing's recorded if they didn't do it. What if somebody intends to do a bad deed and then they stop themselves and say, no, I shouldn't have done this. I won't do it. I'm not going to do this thing. In this case, they'll be recorded a good deed. Why? Because they stopped a bad deed. That's a good deed. Wow. You mean if somebody was thinking, I'm going to rob a bank. No, that's wrong. I'm not going to do that. They get a good deed? Yes. In Islam, yes. Okay, what if they have the intention for a bad deed? They don't stop themselves, and they do the bad deed. Then what happens? Well, as the angel on this side begins to write down the bad deed, the angel on this side says, wait. Don't record it yet. Maybe he will repent. Maybe he will say, Astaghfirullah, Allah forgive me, Allah forgive me. So after a little while, this angel starts to write again, and the angel stops him again and says, wait. Maybe he'll say, Astaghfirullah, Allah forgive me. And then after a while, he still doesn't repent. Then the angel will write for him one full bad deed. Of course, by the way, I should mention, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us, Follow up a bad deed with a good deed. Always follow up a bad deed with a good deed, and this is also in Islam. But to come back to the facet that we're talking about now, which is being just and fair. Whoever deals with the people in fairness and in justice, 
whoever is being fair in all aspects, then he will receive justice on the day of judgment, without doubt. And Allah loves that. The opposite of justice and fairness is called dhulm. Dhulm, and it means oppression. And there's different kinds of oppression. But Allah says that he forbids himself ever to oppress. He never oppresses. And this would be the opposite of his characteristic, which is adil, just. So Allah can never oppress. And he hates it when we oppress each other. And one of the worst oppressions, really, is when a person oppresses themselves. It was the prophet Jonah, or Eunice, when he was in the hut. He was in the whale, down in the bottom of the sea. And he realized he had oppressed himself by leaving his people. When he was commanded to stay with his people, to be with them, to give them this message about worshiping one God. But he left them. He went out to sea. He was thrown off the ship. The whale swallowed him. But look at this. Inside the whale, for those days and nights that he was there, he didn't blame God. In fact, he only blamed himself because he realized the justice. The justice is he had done nothing more than earned exactly what he got. So his statement is so beautiful when he says, La ilaha illa ante subhanaka in kuntum min There is none worthy to worship except you, Allah. All the glory is to you. And verily, I have done wrongdoing to myself, bullam, to myself. At that moment, at that point, that's when Allah caused this whale to take him back up, take him back over, spit him out because he had done the right thing. That was the true justice, to realize that I've done wrong, did it to myself, and the only way to get out of this is to do what? Admit it. Admit my mistake. Dealing with people in justice is something really easy to say, but in fact, it's not that easy, especially when people are not being fair to you. Consider this. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, decided to take the message of worship of one God to the people of a taif, which is not very far, maybe 30 miles or so from Mecca. He went up into the mountains there to speak to the tribal leaders, but they abandoned their own tradition, which is to always receive a guest in the best manner. A guest has three days and nights with the best honor, with food, drink, shelter, anything they need, no questions asked, just come and partake. But they didn't uphold their own tradition. They didn't follow their own custom. Instead, they ignored him. They turned him away. They didn't want to talk to him. They didn't want to hear his message. In fact, they turned the street children, the beggars or the urchins against him, telling them, take rocks and throw on him. And they began to rocks, uh, throw the, these rocks on him to stone him to hit him and his companion and chase them out of town. It, it was really bad. So much so that the blood from his body was filling his sandals. And in this condition, the angel Gabriel came to him and told him that Allah has the angels ready to bring the mountains of a taif down on those people who have oppressed you. All you have to do is say the word and Allah will destroy them. Prophets of old had done exactly this. The prophets before had said, okay, Allah, bring retribution on these people. They want it, bring it on them, destroy them. And this prayer of a prophet is a powerful thing, and people have been destroyed because of that. But the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was a true mercy to mankind. And he dealt in so much justice. And look what he said. No, I'll pray for them instead. And he prayed and he asked Allah to let people some children, some offspring, some genealogy from these people who worship you alone without partners. Because that was his message. That was his goal. The only thing he really wanted to do was get this message across to the people. Worship God without partners. Look at that. Look at this sweetness. And this is really dealing in justice. A human being has a difficulty being fair. 
oh, I can be fair up to a point, especially if it's in my favor anyway. But what about when it's not in my favor to do something? The order comes in the Quran, oh, you who believe, you have to deal in justice. You have to be fair. And you have to stand up for justice even when it's against you, your family, and your wealth. You have to tell the truth. You have to be fair. You have to give fair measure. Not easy, but it's something that if you do it, this is going to give you, in this life, a great advantage, and in the next life, absolutely, because Allah will deal with you in justice. Some people might say, well, there's, there's justice in the land. But I have to tell you that I've heard this a lot. I come from a country and a society where people talk a lot about justice. They talk about freedom. They talk about liberty. But when I watch what's being practiced, I see something else. In my country, for instance, we find the majority of all of the people that are incarcerated in prison are black African Americans. Yet they only make up about 25% or so of the population of the entire society. We find that the majority of the people making the laws and enforcing these laws are not the people that are being subjugated and put into prison. Now I will agree that there are certainly trials that take place. There are judges, there are lawyers. People are getting some justice. But is it real justice when we consider that the majority of the people in this country are white, fair-skinned people, yet very few of them wind up in the same condition? So I often wonder myself, if I misunderstood, did they say peace, freedom, liberty, and justice? Or did they say peace, freedom, liberty for just us? Think about it. Because as Islam teaches us, this beautiful facet, this beautiful part of Islam, being fair and being just, is what it's really all about. Until next time, be fair. Assalamu alaikum.